Hello and welcome to lesson 22. We're 22 already. This is a threshold we have crossed over from what I would call our basic JavaScript techniques for variables and syntax and looping into more intermediate topics. The first one we're going to get into is a complex data type, an array. Now, an array is used for storing data of the same type in a list format where I can address each one of those list elements. Let's take a look at how they work. The first thing is how to declare an array variable. This can either be done with what you see here on line eight. You may see this from time to time, but it's not that common in service now, but it is perfectly valid. Var list equals array and empty parenthesis says, go make me an array. I'm going to store something in it. I don't know if it's going to be numbers or strings or whatever it is. The other way that is a little more preferred, at least where I come from, is the empty brackets. Functionally, they do the same thing. They declare an array, but I don't know why one is preferred over the other. You would think the other one, because it says the word array. By the way, don't name your variable array. Okay, I usually choose something simple like list if it's local to a, a function or answer or result. Now, I can put things into the array and the first position is zero. Keep that in mind. It may come back to bite you later. I know it has a number of times in my career. The first position is zero. You'll often hear programmers say, oh, it's an off by one bug because they started counting at one and said, oh, there's three things in here. One, two, and three, right? Well, three doesn't exist and you missed zero. So into position zero or subscript zero or index zero, you'll often hear somebody say list sub zero equals one. List sub one equals three. That's how we set values into this array. This one is obviously done linearly. It doesn't matter if I go zero to one, but preferably you populate this in an orderly fashion. Then once I've got those values in there, I can determine something interesting about this. I have this property of an array called list.length. If I say list.length, I can glance at this obviously and say, oh, there's three things there. Why do you even need that? Well, I need that to know where to stop if I'm running through a loop or if a function gave me back an array as a result. And I want to know how many of those did I get? How many should I work with? How big of a data set do I have? Did it work at all? I may have zero. A list length of zero means you have nothing. Let's copy that. Select all, copy, and paste that into script background. And not surprisingly, we are going to get list length is three, one, three, five but it doesn't say 135. We'll look at how we get to that in just a second. In the next example, I can populate it in a slightly shorter way. So I declare it and populate it at the same time. It says, here's an array, here's the elements. Now print me the result of that. And it's going to say three again, nothing surprising there. Just showing that you can put this kind of construct together with this. If you know the initial values, it's often handy to set them while you declare it. Save yourself some time. Okay. The final example I have for arrays is actually a two-parter. The first one declares and defines and populates the array of 135 again. And then I go into a for loop. Remember for loop? If you don't, go back and look at that lesson. It has an initializer. So I start counting at zero. Sounds logical for an array because the first position is zero. Don't get fooled. I'm warning you, you will. Then it says, keep running I as long as you're less than the list length. So the list length was three. So this is going to run as long as I is less than three. Zero, one, two, done. Okay. Doesn't do three. I didn't put I as less than or equal. I didn't start counting at one. You'll often hear programmers refer to that off by one bug. Oh, I started counting off by one. That could happen if you said start counting at one and go less. Not in this case. I get the value of i, obviously I'm going through for loop, so I've got the variable i, and then I'm going to get what's stored in position zero, position one, and position two by saying list sub i. And here we go. Let's see if this works. I get zero, one, two is the index, one, three, five is the values in those. Very, very handy if you're calling a function and it says, I'm giving you back an array, here you go. Well, first you want to determine, did I get anything? And if I did, let's work on it. So now you know how to create an array, initialize that array, 
get elements out of the array, and determine what the array length is. You are on your way. Very, very useful for keeping track of things like lists of people, lists of devices, scores on a survey, whatever it is that you want to keep track of, you can do this in an array as long as the data types are all the same. All integers, all strings, all booleans, whatever it happens to be, you can now store it in a very organized fashion. Alrighty, I'll see you again for the next lesson.